Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem construct string from binary tree. Before we get started, I just want to mention, if you haven't heard, I recently launched Neat Code Pro. There's a 25% off launch sale going on right now. You can get lifetime access to all current and future courses. Just before I started recording this, I just launched the first batch of lessons for the advanced algorithms course. I hope to have that finished by the end of September, and by the end of October, we should have the System Designs course released. Okay, now back to constructing a string from a binary tree. We're given the root of a binary tree, and we want to construct a string consisting of parentheses and integers from the binary tree with the pre-order traversal way, and then return it. Now this is kind of confusing, and I think they definitely could have worded this problem better, especially for an easy problem, but essentially we want to do a pre-order traversal. That much is straightforward, uh, but for the first value, it's going to be the first value in the output string. So we're going to have a one. Then we want to do the same thing, a pre-order traversal for the entire left subtree, but we want to put the entire left subtree within a set of parentheses. So now we want to put the entire you know, all the values from the left subtree in this parentheses. So we do that, we have two, so we put the two there, but now for two, recursively, we wanna repeat this. So we wanna put its entire left subtree in a set of parentheses. In this case, it'll just be a single four in a set of parentheses, and then we wanna do the same thing for the right subtree, but there is nothing there, but let's just put an empty set of parentheses for now. Okay, and I just wrote it over here just to clean it up a little bit, but now we did the entire left subtree. Now it's time to do the right subtree, and remember, before we even start, we wanna put it in a set of parentheses. We just have a single value, three. So we put that three there. It doesn't have a left subtree, so I guess we can put some empty parentheses, and it doesn't have a right subtree either, so we can put some empty parentheses. Now the thing here is they say we want to omit all empty parentheses pairs that don't affect the one-to-one -one mapping relationship between the string and the original binary tree. Now the first time I read this problem, I read it as we just want to eliminate all the empty parentheses. So in this case, our solution, we could take this entire string, get rid of this pair of parentheses, get rid of that pair, and get rid of this pair. So then our solution looks like this. And this is the expected solution. So we did it correctly. One thing to mention though, I think it's interesting and it makes this problem slightly harder that we don't have a set of parentheses around the entire string. That's kind of unusual. It seems we only put parentheses around the subtrees, but oh well. Now, before you rush into writing the code, there's actually a second example for this problem that illustrates you know, what they mean by that one-to-one -one mapping relationship. First of all, this output string that we have is not ambiguous. It tells us that the root node is one, it has a left subtree, that root of the left subtree is a two, and that two has a left child four, and that two does not have a right child because if it did, it would have some parentheses over here, but it doesn't. And then we get the right subtree, which is just a three, and of course it doesn't have any children. This is not ambiguous at all. But instead, if we took this four node and it was actually a right child of this two, and then we ran the same algorithm on this tree, we would end up getting a similar string to this one. The only difference would be that we would actually have an empty parentheses in the spot of this, and the four would be over here because the left child of two is empty, but the right child is four. But we would end up taking this string, removing the empty parentheses anyway, and then that would end up reducing back to this guy. But how can two different trees have the same string representation? That shouldn't be allowed. So I think what they're getting at with this is that if we have a node where the left child is non-empty, but the right child is empty, then we can eliminate the parentheses just like we did. But if the left child was null and the right child was non-null, then the output string should actually look like this, where two has a left child, but the left child is empty but it also has a right child, which is four. And then we have three. Three has two uh, null children, right? It, has, it doesn't have any children at all, so there's no need to add extra parentheses there. But this is basically telling us that two does not have a left child, but it does have a right child. Here, we knew that two had a left child, but it didn't have a right child. 
Basically, when the parentheses are at the end, then we can remove them, the empty parentheses. When they're at the end, we can remove them. Or the way I think about it is just, if we have a node that doesn't have a left child, but it does have a right child, then we keep that pair of empty parentheses. Okay, enough talking, now let's code it up. It's not too bad once you kind of understand this caveat. Oh, and of course, since we're doing a pre-order traversal, we're only gonna visit each node once, so the overall time complexity is gonna be big O of N. Okay, jumping into the code, I'm actually gonna declare the result as an array. While we're trying to build an output string, when we take strings and constantly add them together, it's not an efficient operation. It's usually not constant time. So what I'm actually gonna do is take each substring and add it to this array. And then at the end, what we're gonna do is take every substring in the result and join them all together and then return that. When I'm taking this empty string here, I'm just saying that's the delimiter. So we're gonna take every string in result and then add them together. They're gonna to be separated by an empty string. That just means I'm concatenating these together. Okay, now let's write our pre-order function. I'm writing it nested inside the outer function. So we have result in the scope of this function, but our pre-order is going to be given some root node or some node. And if that node is null, we're just going to immediately return. Now you could return a pair of empty parentheses depending on how you're writing it, especially if you're not writing it, you know, if you're just taking the result strings and then adding them together to create the result, then you could probably return stuff, but I'm doing it with an array, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to do that. So I'm just gonna return nothing here. Then what I'm gonna do is we know when we're given, you know, except for the root node, when we're given any node value that's non-null, we want to add an opening parenthesis and then we're allowed to add that value itself. Remember the value is gonna be an integer, so we wanna convert it to a string. So we can take root.val and convert it to a string. And then before now we append that closing parenthesis, before we do that, we have to also run preorder traversal on the left and right subtree. So we're gonna run preorder root.left, preorder root.right. And it's as easy as that. But believe it or not, there are some issues with this code. The first one is relatively simple. The way this code is written, it's gonna put a pair of parentheses around every single node. In this case, even the root node, but we don't want a pair of parentheses around the root node. The pair should be around every subtree, but not the root node. So this result is incorrectly going to look something like this, where it's, you know, one, let's say is the root node, two is, the left node and then three is the right node. It's gonna look like this, but we don't want it to look like this. We don't want that outer pair of parentheses. So the easiest way to get rid of them is just to take this string, this is a string by the way, and then we can get rid of the first character. So we're gonna start at index one and we're gonna go up until the last index, but not including the last index. Negative one is the last index in Python, but whatever index we put as the second one is not going to be included. So we're going to basically chop off the first character and chop off the last character by doing this. So that's the first bug. The second bug is what we talked about in the drawing explanation. Here, the way I've written the code if we have an empty node, right, an empty child, we're not gonna end up appending anything to the result. And that's usually what we wanna do. Usually we want to eliminate all empty parentheses, except the case where the left child is null, but the right child is not null. So the easiest thing to do here, actually, believe it or not, is just an if statement. We can say if root.left is, uh, is null, so not root.left, and root.right is non-null, then we can simply say result.append a pair of parentheses. So we're doing this, we're adding that pair of parentheses when we, only when we need to, and then we're still running pre-order on left and right. I mean, technically, if this does execute as true, we would not need to execute this line of code, but I'm just leaving it like this for simplicity. So in that case, this pre-order traversal would just immediately return, but this pre-order traversal would still end up adding that right subtree. Oops, I guess we had another couple bugs. First of all, we should not be appending to the root. The root is a tree node. 
So we want to append to the result. I had it correct up here. Don't know. I probably turned my brain off when I was writing that line of code. And also we wrote our pre-order function, but we never called it. That's a really easy thing to forget. We're going to call it passing in the root node that we were given in the outer function. Now let's run the code and make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's really efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources and you can get 25% off Neatcode Pro. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.